Rasulullah. Allahu Akbar, 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 Allahu وأشهد أن لا إله إلا وده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد نبي الرسول ومصطفى اللهم صل وسلم على بك رسولك محمد وأهله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله في العالم وتنك الله ومايري وكين تنك الله ومايري إنف for Allah waking us up and we're waking up still in dunya, still in the lowest life, still in the place in which our grandparents, Adam and Eve, fell to, which was held to where they were. And the fact that we are born in the place in which they fail to is so much wisdom in the the physical our physical existence if they fail from a place a high place and they came and they fell to this place and they were begging, begging, begging Allah Almighty to forgive them. That meant that they didn't like this place. This wasn't a very nice place. This place did not feel good. This place did not feel like the place that they had fallen from. And it was many years. A few hundred years. That Allah Almighty mighty made them to stay on this earth. Dunya, low life, lowest life. So when they, Allah finally forgave them, Allah forgave them in the lowest life. Dunya. If we really understood the wisdom of our physical bodies, you would jump for joy. Because Allah Almighty, we were once in divine presence. Our souls were in divine presence. We all knew our Lord. We were all worshiping our Lord. We all promised to our Lord. We'll always be obedient. You will. See, Allah knows what don't nobody else know. And His wisdom is such that nobody else knows. But Allah Almighty wanted to be known. So He sent us here in a physical body, hiding in us. Hiding in us. Sending us in a place that our grandparents fell to, which was so painful, they begged a lot for over 300 years. Oh, Allah, please. And they only sinned one time. One time. Was enough for those who were in divine presence and seeing and knowing their Lord. That's why it's such an honor, such a rank for anybody among the human beings to find their Lord in a place that is painful and low and decadent. This is adversity. From the time that Allah Almighty plants us into the womb of our mother. We don't even 
even feel it until Allah Almighty puts that soul into that body when we're in the womb of our mothers. Now, that's when the misery starts. Because now we are spiritual beings having the attributes of our Lord Allah Almighty. Now Allah Almighty is hiding us in something physical. And that part of us is from Allah Almighty. And now we're going from pain after pain after pain after pain. It's painful in the womb of our mothers. We don't remember that pain. Even our mothers don't remember that pain in giving birth. If they remember that pain, I don't think too many, too many of us would be born. Some of them stay in labor hours, some two hours, some three hours, some longer. And yet they still don't remember that pain because procreation continues. <clears throat> so we have to understand that Allah honored, we are honored. And Allah brings every storm, every wherewithal on us, every problem, every difficulty. And He told the angels, I know about them what you know not. The angel was saying, oh, they're going to cause all kind of havoc. Allah had told the angels to bow down to Adam. Not so Iblis, who was a jinn. Allah, oh my, that conversation is still going on. We are a part of that conversation. Our grandparents, 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 before them, this had already been put in motion. The ink was dry. No one had any knowledge or understanding or cousin that, that we even existed. We were souls. And Allah Almighty wanted to be known, but what did Allah Almighty want to be known? He wanted us to know about ourselves. And in knowing about ourselves, that's how we know about Allah Almighty. Anytime you see anyone, any athlete or any entertainer or anyone that achieves anything great, Nothing is achieved of any kind of greatness without painful adversary difficulties. And when those people excel, we look at them and want their autographs. How did you do it? They write books, they give seminars, they talk it. How did you do it? And if they're for real, they'll say there is a God. Because many times they was in that doctors, they would say, oh, if there's anything. Like Musa said, if there's any good you have for me, no water, no food, nothing but pain and difficulty coming on my body, I cannot stand it. You have to realize that Allah Almighty honored us to come here so we may know Him. And that's why suffering has its mission. Difficulties has its mission. Struggle has its mission. Problems have their mission. Shaitan has a mission. Because without Shaitan, there will be no, no need for us to come here and to have the difficulties. Because Shaitan, because he's still envious, he is the difficulty. He was on the scene before Adam alayhi salam. Far beyond, many eons of years before Adam even came on the scene, he was around worshiping Allah Almighty, teaching the angels. He was the superhero. But you have to understand about Allah Almighty. And this is why we feel alone. 
This is why we feel like we don't even have any purpose or existence. We have lost that communication and relationship with Allah Almighty. When Allah Almighty says, hasten to the mosque and remember me, so I remember you. Allah wants to give us something that gives us the ability to overcome any and every difficulty. Allah didn't say some difficulties is relief. Allah says with every difficulty, there is relief. Every difficulty. Every difficulty. So we start whining and start, that, start playing that poor me card, that victim card. That means that we doubt. That means we doubt. Allah says this is the book without doubt for those who believe. In the unseen and fear me and give out of what I've given them in the way of being a witness to their power of Allah in themselves. We don't get it. We see these sad, sad, sad faces. We see these horrible looking places. Paradise didn't look like that. Paradise don't look like that. But the horrible thing about it is that we've accepted that. We accept that decadence in ourselves and outside of ourselves. Vibrant, powerful people representing Allah Almighty. Allah has honored the human beings with that power. Shaitan didn't get it. Iblis did not get it. The angels doubted it. Oh, Allah, you're going to create somebody? Who's going to, that means they didn't know. They were innocent. And they're not knowing the ignorance. But he bleached was willful disobedient. He said, I don't care if they're above me. I ain't going to, I'm not going to listen to them. And if they are below me, I'm going to destroy them. And that's what's happening. Those that he cannot reach. Don't obey him. And those that he can reach, he destroys them. Look at our society. Look at our families. Look at the human family. Don't you know when, back in the time of Nimrod, the, 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 the Tower of Babel, what that was is that Nimrod was trying to build a stairs to the heaven to show that he's God. And he was building it. He was the one that started the first skyscraper. And when the law might have put the wrath on him, everybody started speaking another language. We were all one people. One mind, one heart. But through that disobedience of listening to Shaitan, who Allah Almighty is a, he hates us. Allah says, you take Iblis and his offspring as lords for you, setting up partners to me. When they hate you, and we wonder why we don't have it inside, why we're missing something inside. We're missing goodness inside of us. We're missing Allah Almighty inside of ourselves. We're missing our reality of understanding of ourselves, who we are and who's we are in ourselves. And we run everywhere else. When Allah Almighty sends us a sign, that's where I want you to be to get what you need because that's where I'm sending. Anytime you get a reflection, take a mirror and put it in your face. It only reflects in one direction right in front of you. When Allah Almighty reflects that light, it reflects in one direction on those who are connected to that reflection. It ain't scattered everywhere. Next time when you look in the mirror, see if you see all behind you and on the side everywhere else. You can only see in front of you, your reflection. We 
we don't get it. We don't get it. Yet every day we're waking up and not getting it. And we do those things to ourselves that harm ourselves. If you're on a direction, you have a map to go on the expressway. To go somewhere. And it says to keep in this direction. You take an exit that you're not supposed to take. Then you come back on it after taking the wrong direction and knowing it's in the right direction, wrong direction. And somebody is cheering you and saying, yeah, you, I'm proud of you. You took the wrong direction. This is what Shaitan and his family, his dupes do. We do decadent things in the society that's against the laws of our soul. Shaitan sends his expression of happiness through his dupes. Yeah, I'm glad. You, congratulations. I'm proud of you. You're disobedient to my almighty. You're wrong in your soul. Whose interest is it in for us to take the wrong exit and continue in the wrong way? Never reaching our destination. Just remaining lost. Because I'm going to tell you, when you lost, you know you're lost. You don't recognize where you are. You don't have a sense of stability and peace and security when you're lost. You have to ask yourselves, why am I lost? Why am I feeling this way? See, we don't get it. We get it. We get, we get it wrong. See, we have followed Shaitan who come in the person of a human being, misguide us. We're chased after him. But when the law almighty sends somebody for us to chase after, we say, oh, we're community shirt. I am a worshiping. When we came in this world, who do we follow? Our mother and father. We saw them walking. We wanted to walk. We saw them talking. We tried to talk. We were so eager to sit up because we saw them sitting up. Don't you know if they'd have been raised by coyotes, they'd have been acting like coyotes? So our guidance start visual with our physical senses. Follow a good example. Not a good example of a bad example. We don't get it. Law says, obey Allah. Obey the prophet. And obey those that are putting an authority over you. Because when you follow them, you're following me. When you love them, you're loving me. They are good examples of a good example. Why? So we won't be lost. <clears throat> So we won't be lost. There's a commercial that comes on TV. And this guy, with his, with his, this, this, this father's with his son. And he got a baseball. He says, let me show you how to throw this baseball. And go. <laughs> and his son gets a baseball. And he throws it like that. But if he go around baseball players, they're going to laugh him off the field. That's what Shaitan has set us, set us up to be laughed at by the angels, by the prophets, by the believers. Because he got us thinking we're the stuff. <laughs> Where's your power coming from? Where's your positioning coming from? Where's your balance coming from? You don't throw no ball like that. But there's a wisdom in everything, everywhere, if we awake. But we're asleep. Talk about the sleepers. There was a group of youngsters back, way back in the day. And they was wanting to believe in Allah. They believed in Allah Almighty. But the people in their area wanted to kill them because they were talking about something other than Allah Almighty. So Allah Almighty had them to go to a cave, to retreat to a cave. And they were laying out just in the, the cave was not so deep that they could go totally inside. They were like outside in front of the cave. But when people came by to see them, they were, had terror in their hearts because of the way Allah Almighty made them appear. They were asleep. Allah put them to sleep. 
But guess what? When they woke up, somebody said, well, how long do you think we've been sleeping? They said, oh, about a day, a day and a half. They have been asleep for 300 years plus nine years. Law like Bob. See, this Lord that you don't want to follow that created everything in heaven and earth is the God, is the Lord. Satan even says, Allah Almighty promised you the truth. I promised you the truth, but I failed in my promise to you. I just call you and you believe me. So don't blame me. Blame yourselves. This is why Allah Almighty honors the human beings that fight that part of us that's an enemy to Allah Almighty. They are not lonely. Allah Almighty sends with them everywhere an army of angels. He gives them signs. Allah showed them. Look, let me show you what you're working with. Allah will show those, those signs. Physical. They will see the army of angels or the army of unseen with them to encourage them to be more and more that you are on the right way. They are never alone, nor are they ever lonely. All they got to do is say, oh, Allah, bam. For they even say it. Allah gives for they Allah already knew. Because they are on the path. They're on the straight way. They don't deviate. If they deviate, it's because Allah is testing them to see how, if they're good and kind of, they will turn back on their path again on that expressway as repentance. If we're going from here to the expressway, we know the stores, the bus stops on either side. And so we know who we're going to come in contact with. That's how it is. When Allah puts you on the path, his path, he already knows you're on that path. You ain't even got to ask. Allah knows what's on the path. Shaitan is on the path. Shaitan said, I'm going to lay on a straight way. Now you tell me Allah Almighty didn't hire Shaitan to test us. How in the heck he going to be on the, how you going to rebel to, bow down to Adam, disobey Allah Almighty, and he on the straight way? See, this is what we don't think. See, there's a wisdom there. He is the tester, he is the gatekeeper. And he'll come on the, on the, on the, on the expressway, on the straight way, and get the flash in it. Hey! Look what we got here. It's like those people you're driving down and they come out with them costumes on. Get your taxes done here. <laughs> come on up in this place. Shaitan all out there. He's dancing. Got his music on. Throwing his she devils out there for the men and his he devils for the women. <coughs> oh, let me check this out. Whoa. Shadows of deception. Shadows of deception. And it gets us every time. And we wonder why we have a miserable life. Why our family life is miserable. Why our community life is miserable. Why our, our, our career lives are miserable. Why oh, we're miserable. I'm lonely. So you know what Shaitan says? Hey. I got something to make you feel good. I got something to put you to sleep. I got something to wake you up. I got something for you to carry yourself all during the day. Oh, he gonna give you something. Because he don't want, he don't want that, he want that disconnect. He wants us to always have a glitch in our connection. He always wants us to short out from that current, that divine current that enlightens us. It gives us power, understanding, that we can see clearly. You think he want us to see him? He was bold. He said, Allah, I'm going to lead them all astray, all of them. 
Then it came to him, and he said it out of his mouth. Well, except for those that got the grace on them. Except for those got the grace on them. <laughs> the Duke said, what? Maybe we ain't going to get all of them. <laughs> I'm doing well about him, bro. <laughs> and he working. He works. He don't sleep. He don't sleep. He even makes three salats a day. Some of us make less than that. He out praying us. We really lost it. No lights on our faces, no brightness. No power of attraction. To pull the goodness out of people. See, Allah is in everyone. And Allah is irresistible. That's why his servants, his friends are irresistible. They can bring us from darkness to light. They can pull a shaitan out of us. They said magician can bring a, a rabbit out of hat. They can bring shaitan out of our hind pots. Not our hind pots, but out of us. <laughs> Edit that. <laughs> They are miracle workers. No magic in their game. And when we're around them, you can't go around them without taking some benefit. Allah Almighty is always sending heavenly powers, heavenly gifts to those who are with those people. And they feel it if they're not asleep. So those sleepers who in that cave for over 300 years. See, there's always two meanings. There's the physical meaning, then there's the spiritual meaning. For 309 years, they were in seclusion. <coughs> they were in reality. Because the Prophet Muhammad said, leave the, the small war of fighting yourselves and, and this duty and falling for the illusion of this world and fight that part of yourself. That shaitan is lying on the straightway, keeping you from your Lord. Keeping you from your gifts. Keeping you from that power that gives you ability to represent Allah Almighty, to establish the kingdom of heaven on earth. Esau ibn Maryam, Jesus Christ says, fight everything that is not of you. Then when you seek then you can seek the kingdom of heaven within yourself. All things will be given unto you. It's the same light. It's the same reflection. Same reflection. Allah Almighty is not some silly guy that he don't know what he's doing. And we everything's all scattered out and he's confused. One reflection. One direction. One perfection. We don't get it though. We do everything against ourselves because we keep taking the wrong exit. We're distracted by the exit. Shaitan's people is at the exit and he's getting us to come off. And we do it willfully. Well, I can have it. Well, Allah will forgive me. Don't play that game. Because Allah Almighty is merciful, but He's strict in punishment. All you got to do is go back and look at Sodom and Gomorrah. All you got to do is go back and you talk to Noah and them people. All you got to do is talk to Moses and his people. Talk to Pharaoh. These are not tales of the ancient. Allah Almighty is now ready through beloved Muhammad so what went, went before him and what's coming after him. And we ain't no different from them. We run into mosques and still don't get guided. We run into churches and still don't get guided. We run into synagogues and still don't get guided. We run into temples and still don't get guided. Why? Because we keep taking the wrong exits. We don't know that these are sins. So the less wrong exits you take, and I'm not saying 
the innocent exit. Because when you take an innocent exit, you realize, wait a minute, something, I, I don't feel, this don't even feel right. I don't, I'm off, let me look at my map or something. Let me check and call somebody or something. Because you don't feel it. You don't feel the energy. You don't feel the pull, the attraction, that you're going toward that that you're seeking. Because the heart seeks what it seeks it. And what you seek, seeks you. What you seek, seeks you. And what seeks you, you seek it. Be careful where you put your heart. It will attract you. That's why the Almighty says, your body for you, the heart is for me. Calvin Mookman, Beta Law, the heart of the believer is the house of Allah Almighty. That's why the world is supposed to be a mosque. Everybody's heart should have Allah Almighty there. It should be the cow, wherever we are, the cow. Angels going around, worship, serving. Angels were created to, to serve human beings. Jinn were created to serve human beings. Because they only have, they have the ability to represent the Lord of the worlds that created everything in between, the heavens and the earth. Allah bring them here to extend his kingdom. To raise place, a paradise in a place where there's hell. And he even sent them in places that there's decadence. When the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu came on the scene, they were worshiping idols and doing all kinds of things. When they sent him there, it became place Islam. And as long as the people were keeping their post, as long as they were here and obeying, Allah Almighty through His beloved Muhammad Sallallahu and those in authority over them, they did not leave their ranks chasing the booty. See, what has happened now, we have left the ranks and all of us out now chasing the booty, chasing this world. See, we have stabbed the prophet in his back and in his heart. And we're chasing after the world. He did not invite us to this world. He invited us to establish the kingdom of heaven on earth. But we left our rights. And that's why we feel confused and lonely. How do we get back? You have to follow someone who's following someone to know the way. Follow Satan who don't know the way. And the miserable. Now we're crying. We're blaming the law Almighty. When you followed him. You don't have to go up in the dope man's house. You don't have to go in the pimp's house. You don't have to go to a whore house. You don't have to go in the liquor store. But there are men there. They're selling something. That's inviting you to. Satan is using them. To invite you there. Look at most of the Muslims in the world. They lost their posts, chasing the booty of this life. And they are disgraceful. Yeah, I said it. They are disgraceful. They should have come here. And those who were brought here against their will and made to suffer, they should have come and embraced us. With Islam. But yet they came and exploited us. With Shaitan's deen. And there's a reckoning for that. Now Allah Almighty is going to raise up a people that's not going to be like them. In their very midst they're going to see. From this place. Allah Almighty is going to build a nation from this place. Here. Play some games and hit somebody. Listen.
Is somebody crazy talking? I ain't talking crazy. You think I'm talking crazy? You wait and watch. You wait and watch. When the law might want to change something, he sends people to do it. If you've been angels, he sent angels. But if our hearts are asleep, we can't know. We can be pickpocketed by shaitan. Allah Almighty sends them to wake the people up. Yes. Right. <laughs> because they're unhappy, sad faces, loneliness, confusion. They don't have prosperity mentally, physically, spiritually, financially, socially, politically, ethically. They're crazy. They don't even know what food, they don't know what to think, they don't know what foods to eat, they don't know how to meditate. Don't you know there's a study now? Even all the doctors are coming together, this study, they're finding that when people meditate, there's a part of the brain that degenerates, it regenerates that brain that degenerates from sitting with yourself and just meditating and breathing. Just think if they're going to call the names of Allah Almighty. Which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? So there are some people that are very happy on this planet. They're here for one reason and one reason only. They are in awe to see the power of their Lord working through themselves. They are in awe. They say, oh Lord, I don't want to come back to the next world until I finish this, what I'm supposed to do. And if while I'm in my body, the most difficult opportunity. That's like Michael Jordan when he was playing, he had the flu. His partner, Scotty, had to hold him up. They won the championship. He was shooting jumpers and was half dead because he wanted to win. And they won. He didn't want to come out of the game. We should feel that. We don't want to come out of this game until we win this game against Shaitan. Calling all soldiers! Calling all brave people. Calling all those who believe in the law almighty only. And not Satan or our names. Because that's certain. That's why we're here. If you didn't know it, you've been told that's what it is. Believe it or not, that's not going to change the truth. I know that's the only reason I'm on the planet. I wouldn't want to be here for another reason. If you gain all the world and lose your soul, what's the point? There were two men. One man, he had a garden. And he had a cornfield and he had olives. And, and, and all kinds of fruits, and he had a river right there on his land, and he was fruitful, and he had an army of people. And he used to say, look at what I got. And there was another guy, he used to say, his neighbor, he says, look what I got. You don't have anything. Look what I got. And the guy said, they didn't have anything. He says, maybe my Lord has something better for me. He said, and maybe a, a thunderbolt may come and destroy all your stuff. So when the Lord did destroy his stuff, <laughs> and he said, look at all this time I put into this, because he used his nap. He set the partners to the Lord, his Lord, by saying, I, look what I got. Look what I did. We do the same thing. So ain't nothing changed but the places and the faces. We get the same test in another kind of way. We're either going to be with our Lord or not. It's too late, but that's the only choice. Really, it ain't no choice. Should be no choice. But Shaitan has to work hard. He's a hard worker. He's a hard worker. Because he has almost 90% of the, the world chasing after him. Killing for him over what? 
Something we cannot take with us when we leave. Trying to gain the world but losing our souls. Jesus Christ said it. Prophet Muhammad said it. Peace be upon them. All of them said the same thing. They represent the best in us. Shaitan represents the worst in us. Do you think Shaitan is happy? He's so unhappy too he's ugly. He used to be physically seen. But now he possesses people. There's nobody that Shaitan possesses that they, they look good. They're ugly. They have an ugly face. Their faces are ugly. When you look in the mirror and see an ugly face, know you've been possessed. You listening to you taking the wrong exit. Your beauty comes from your heart and it should show on your face. You don't need makeup or nothing to be beautiful. Let your heart be beautiful. Put your heart with your Lord and you'll be beautiful. A lot beautiful. We lost it. And we become ugly. No one likes an ugly face. Wake up in the morning, look in the mirror, oh, I gotta wash my face, I gotta brush my teeth, I gotta fix yourself up. So you can look decent to you. That's why married couples they, they buy to get in the bathroom first. <laughs> they come out. I went to the other high, go sit down, so they scared in there. <laughs> you should always try to look your best. Always try to do your best. Always give your best. Then Allah will be pleased with you. When Allah is pleased with you, then that's what nearness to Allah is. See, we feel lonely because there's no nearness to Allah Almighty. Allah don't like what we do, so there's no nearness. Who do you know that you don't like that's near to you? We're in the image of our Lord. Tell me about your best friend you had. What do you like about your best friend? You can relate to them. They relate a good relationship. They treat you good. You treat them. So y'all become best friends. You can talk. You can trust them. What about someone you can't trust? See, when Allah, when we realize that we show it to Allah Almighty to ourselves, because Allah knows and we show that we are trustworthy. Oh, Lord, I trust you. I believe in you. With sincerity. Allah Almighty gives you your trust. Woo! When Allah gives you your trust, that's it, that's all. That's the greatest achievement. Allah has just given you the inheritance of the next life and the inheritance of this life and this life. What you want? What you want. Now you got it. You got it. And we're the only creatures that have the ability to get it like that. Why are we taking advantage of it? And whose interest is it in that we don't take advantage of it? Definitely not ours. Definitely not ours. We're asking Lord Almighty to forgive us. Can you have one long time for you? Allahu Akbar, 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 Allahu to be a servant, an obedient servant, because it's going to give us the ability to honor our existence. And when that happens, the human being receives something that we cannot fathom intellectually. Allah become your eyes. What is that? Allah gives us the ability to see beyond what our beyond our imagination. Now imagination can imagine this thing 
of your wildest imagination. Just think of your greatest ability to imagine. You're able to see further than that. You're able to hear further than that. You're able to know further than that. This is Allah Almighty. This is what He wants to give us. This is what we're invited to. Look at the miracle of us being the descendants of those who were captured and lost their way and given something and forced to worship something that was not of them, not from them, did not feed them, did not take them from darkness to light, did not return them to Allah Almighty. For Allah Almighty to reach out and bring us to that that they did not receive. Now being a mercy for those who didn't know or were cheated. Our prayers, we can pray for them. And Allah Almighty raise them where they are in the next life. Kabir! 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 What do you want? What do you want? Why the ugly faces? Means we don't understand. We don't understand that we have to follow those who understand. Because how can we understand? If you don't know how to play an instrument, you get a book and try to play an instrument. It's not like somebody who actually knows how to play an instrument. Do we get it? See, this is the fact that we don't believe that Allah Almighty has a personal relationship with human beings means that we think that the Old Testament, New Testament, Quran are tales of the ancient. Jesus wasn't, was Jesus really real? Do you think Moses was real? You think that was really real? You think Abraham, you think Solomon was really real? You think the Prophet Muhammad was really real? This is what they say. Whose interest is it for them to be thinking like that? You know they crazy out their mind. They probably can't even sleep at night. They can't even, and then they, they can't even stay awake in the day. They can't even work. They can't even communicate. They have to be medicated. They have to be medicated. Because if they don't, they're going to hurt somebody. Probably first of all themselves. Because now they hate themselves because they don't know themselves. Lost in themselves. Lost in an inner universe that's greater than the outer verse. That's worse than the matrix. That's a forever and forever, forever being lost. No walls. No direction, no correction. Just wandering. The penalty for not following guidance. We've got to be ignorant out of our mind not to follow guidance, good guidance. Something's wrong with us. And that's why we suffer. To lack anything is suffering is a curse. When someone lacks, that has good sense, they learn how to get back that that they lack. You've got to go to a human being to get it. Because if an angel of love, he sent us to angels. Law tells us. Read the Quran. Read the Quran. And even if you don't understand the Arabic, just look at it and put your finger on it. Get some light from it. Just make wudu and start reading it. When you start reading it to your heart, you're going to see you. Because those are Allah Almighty's words. And regardless of what language you try to put it in, the light of Allah still come through it. The Arabic is there. Allah's words. Allah know you're reading it. Allah is clear in his thinking. Allah sees clearly. Allah knows everything. There's nothing out of his sight. Beware of that. Mighty eyes are always on us. Don't trip. Don't slip. Don't dip. Don't flip. Because shaitan got a frying pan. In this life and in the next life while we're in this life. Of misery. Misery. No matter how much money you're making or how famous you're getting, you still feel a lack. 
And you're going to try to compensate that lack with something synthetic, something decadent? Something that's going to make you that much more angrier and hateful and miserable? It's common sense. Common knowledge. But common knowledge is not so common anymore. Common knowledge is not no longer common knowledge. We're not healthy. <coughs> We're not healthy. And that's why the Quran is a healing and a mercy. And those servants of Allah Almighty are healings and mercies. We have to have representative examples of Allah's word. That's why Allah says, follow, follow me, follow the prophet, follow those I put in authority. They are the ones that Allah put in front of us to be example of his word. His words in motion. When are we going to get that? What's so difficult about that? If we're really sincere, Allah will guide us. We're not, we're not going to be guided. It's going to be tripping. So the angel of death comes and says, okay, your time is up. I ain't ready to go yet. <laughs> ain't my fault. <laughs> Should have been ready. What was you doing? What you want to stay here for? The longer you stay here and you're not guided, all you're doing is putting more rope around in there. Don't you think it's a mercy that we take you now instead of later on? And maybe they may repent at that time. Maybe Allah's mercy may say, okay, boom. You repent. They may repent like they never repented. Because once we go on the other side, and we beg a lot of come, because we're going to beg a lot to come back. We're going to beg repentance either one way, either on this side or the next side. We do it on this side, another opportunity. Do it on the other side, Allah says, mm -mm. too late. You don't have the honor of your body, which is the test. This is a test. It's a loan to help us in our test. All that power has to come through the body. That's why we have to keep it clean, keep it pure. You don't cook in dirty pots. Clean food. They say cleanliness and next to godliness, purification has you faith. You got to keep your mind clean. You got to keep your body clean. You got to keep your heart clean. Because shaitan don't come on cleanliness. He's like, ooh, too clean for me. Too clean with your clean self. He likes filth, decadence, confusion, messiness. He likes that. That's why Allah said, be clean. Be clean. Don't mistreat people, you won't be mistreated. You don't harm people, you won't have to be harmed. That's how it goes. Those are the laws, the spiritual laws. What goes around comes around. You actually reap what you sow, for real. That's real. Don't harm nobody with your tongue or your hand. And if they unjustly, you are harm, you are attacked, Allah says defend yourself. Allah will be defending you. Allah will defend you. Allah says, my friends, anyone declare war on them, I declare war on them. Allah says that. That's verbatim quotatum. Allah says, anyone that harms my friends, I'm going to harm them. This is what's going on now over in the Middle East. They harm many of the family of the prophet, many innocent people. Now the Middle East in more problems than you can shake a stick at. It's a hell in the Middle East. And we're fortunate. I just hope we use our wisdom. Don't look at who's saying it to you. Look at who's making me say to you. Am I saying something wrong to you? And we have to use our wisdom. I'm not coming here to impress. There's no need. But if Allah is sending us here to hear something for ourselves, that's a blessing. We're still in our physical body. That's why we always say, oh, Allah, thank you for the opportunity of waking us up to be able to get it right again. Get it even better. 
That's a blessing, man. That's a blessing. We have to recognize that. Lost mercy is coming from everywhere. And if you don't take that and move out with it, it's going to be a horrible feeling when you can't do anything. That day when a lot calls us out of this life, and you're going to still be aware. You're going to think, okay, you dead, but you ain't dead. You're going to be aware. Your body won't be able to do nothing. Body be stiff as a board, start to stink. Had to put it under the earth. But your soul will be saying, oh my God, I wish I had my body. I would be, I would be praising my Lord. I'd be in Jude right now. We don't get it. We really don't get it. That's why we don't feel good in ourselves. We don't feel good. How can you feel good without your Lord? It's impossible. We ask him not to forgive us. Woman not to forgive us. This is not our man Rahim. Alhamdulillah, I mean. Rahim. Malik Yamidin. Iyaka na budu wa iyaka na sta'in. Iddina sirata mustaqim. سراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين. كم لصلاح؟